figure out where we were. Mm. Another example of matter that's hard to detect is air, the invisible gas that surrounds you. How do you know it's there? You can't see or smell it, but you know it exists because you can feel it when the wind blows and see it bend the branch of a tree. Read that little green bubble, the word watch there. Landon? Very good. Turn to the next page. Properties of matter. You know that a piece of cork is different from a piece of clay. Cork will break if you squeeze it hard, but clay will flatten or bend into a new shape. If you had a scale nanny, you would find that a piece of cork weighs less than a piece of clay the same size. If you dropped both objects in water, you would see that cork floats, but the clay what? Sinks. Characteristics like these that help us identify or classify matter are called properties. properties. Good. All right, look up here. All matter or all things have properties that we can use to describe them, right? Let's take this book, for example. What are some things you could do to describe this book? Um, is it solid? It is solid. Good. Gavin? It is made of paper. It is made of paper. So what does that mean for it? Like, what does that mean? It can be torn. It can be torn. Okay. Yes. It's not living. It's not living. Very good. The texture is smooth. The texture is smooth. Landon? Multicellular? Trinity? Actually, no, because it's not living. <laughs> multi add some. Yeah, Any atoms? Multi add. Trinity? Flammable. Very good. If I held a flame to this book, it would burn. It is flammable. Reagan? If it was put in water, like this boat, you can make it sink. Okay, so it has a certain density to it. And Connor. Uh, and if you were to put the cup, and if you put the whole book in there, it would probably sink. But if you just put a piece of it in there, it would float. Okay. But because it was in still water and it just okay. It floated and it okay. All right. So anyway, my point is, physical properties are things that you can look at and describe about the object. Okay. It has a certain Ooh. size. It's I don't know six by four or whatever. Yeah. It has a certain weight to it. It has a certain yeah. mass. It has a density. It's flammable. both property, physical properties and chemical properties. Physical properties are those that can be observed without changing the makeup or identity of the matter. For example, clay is malleable. Say malleable. Malleable. Good. Which means it will bend or flatten when squeezed. Someone give me an example of something that will bend or flatten when you squeeze it. Bella? A sponge. changes the shape of the clay, but does not change what the clay is made of. Malleability is an example of physical property. The chart below lists some common physical properties of matter. Read the description for density, please. Nathan? The amount of water in a given body defines the shape of the body. Good. The amount of matter. <laughs> Ductility. Connor? to be, be pulled into a thin strand like a wire. Good. Malleability. Sophie?
Are you in? The ability to dissolve in another person. Good. Those are all physical properties. Things that you can observe or measure about the object without having to change it. Okay? If I measure the weight of my book, I will still have the same book after I finish. Right? Now, there are some properties that if I, when I go to measure it, it will change the object. Flammability is a good example. If I want to see how flammable this is, what do I have to do? Well, I have to burn it, set it on fire. Once I do that, it will change the composition of the, of the material. It will no longer be paper, it will be ash. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so those are chemical properties. We'll read about those next. Uh, let's do, let's say, read about chemical properties. Ethan A, please, nice and loud. Reactivity. Good. Physical and chemical changes. If you fold a sheet of paper into thirds, you're left with a piece of paper one-third the size of the original. But the newly folded paper is still paper. Two physical properties of the paper, its size and shape, have changed, but not its chemical properties. Such a change is called a physical change. Good. Anna, keep going. Read the little purple bubble there. Trinity? What is physical change? Measurable. Reversed. It's okay. For example, you can unfold the paper to see which kind of change it will have on the paper. Most chemical change, however, cannot be believed to be done. For example, you can't unwind the charge in the paper. Very good. Question, Regan? Yes. Or not question, but tell me what. Okay, well, let's ask the question part. Um, so, the, the, is the difference between the physical and the chemical change, the chemical change is anything that happens between the two basically substances, between the one, the one main object and the, uh, another uh, substance reacting to it? Uh, if there's that? any kind of reaction, yes, it's a chemical change. And then a physical change is anything that happens at the same time. Correct. It's the same material before and after. And can I see my pen for one second? Yes. Scientists have been, been able to unboil a hard boiled egg. I just think that's really cool. Interesting. It's great. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Right? Boiled egg. Yes. Okay. So this duct quality, mm -hmm. um, is it called duct tape because they say that you can pull it from the duct tape? <laughs> that's a great question. I'm not sure, but that is how I get you to remember it, is thinking of duct tape. Great. Okay. Good question. All right, states of matter, Go, moving on. Think about the difference, for example, between a rock, milk, and air. The shape of a rock does not change unless you cut or smash it. Milk takes on the shape of its container, and if you pour it out on the floor, it will spread out to form a puddle. Air spreads out even more than milk does, and it keeps spreading out in all directions. Rocks, milk, and air represent different physical forms in which a substance can exist. A rock is a solid. Milk is a liquid. And air is a gas. Solids, liquids, and gases are three states of matter. The chart below lists the defining features of each state. A solid keeps its shape and volume. A liquid takes on the shape of its container, keeps the same volume, in a container or not, and can flow. Let's see what this for example. If I had a little rock, 
okay, that I want to place into my jar here, right? Well, I can put it in here as long as it's small enough. Will it change the size or shape of the rock? No. But let's take milk. If I have a gallon of milk and I want to pour, or let's say I have two cups of milk in the gallon container, right? It's all kind of spread out. And I want to pour it into this jar right here. Will I still have the same amount before and after? Two cups and two cups. Maybe. Maybe. Yes, I will. As long as it all goes in. <laughs> uh, will it have the same shape it had before? No. No. What if I take the milk from in here then and pour it out on the floor? Will I still have two cups of milk? Yes. Yeah. Yes, but the shape of it will change. That's one of the main properties of liquid. Okay? The volume or the amount of it is the same, but the shape of it will change based on what kind of container it's in, if it's in any container at all. Gas, however, takes on the shape and volume of its container and can flow through a, through a room, for example. Think about gas like smoke. If someone stuck a little pipe under the door and released some green smoke into the room, it would start over in that corner, but eventually it grows and spreads throughout the whole room, correct? Okay. Now, it would be much thinner as it spread out, right? It wouldn't be quite as strong as when it first came into the room, but that's what gas does. Gas grows in volume as well as shape. Does that make sense? So, gas changes shape and volume. Liquid changes shape, but doesn't change volume. And then solid doesn't change either one. It's still the same no matter where you put it. Does that make sense? Okay. So on your questions for right now, we're going to go on and look at the atomic structure of each of them. Okay? First, did you know? Read this one, please. Ethan H. The current state of matter is unknown. Like gas, plasma does not have any shape and volume. Plasma is Good. Plasma is actually a fourth state of matter. It's when you take a gas and heat it up or add electricity to it to where it basically causes the atoms to split. Okay? Um, neon signs, fluorescent lights, those are all objects that are in plasma state. Plasma actually creates a glow. Okay? But why are solids solid, liquids liquidy, and gas is gassy? To answer this question, you first need to understand three things. Number one, all matter is made up of tiny particles called atoms and molecules. Number two, these particles attract each other, like magnets. The greater the attraction, the closer the particles get. Number three, these particles are constantly in motion and bumping into each other. The temperature of a substance is related to the speed at which its particles move. The state of a substance depends on how fast its particles move and how strong the attraction is between the particles, all right? Look down here at the bottom of these pictures, all right? If you could take a microscope and zoom in to look at the atom of each of these states of matter, you would see something similar to this. A solid state of matter has lots of atoms that are very close together and they're not moving apart. Now. Technically, these atoms are vibrating. Atoms are constantly in motion, okay? So there is some movement, some vibrating, some shaking going on, but it's not enough to actually break apart. My, this desk, this white table, for example, if I could look at the atoms of this table, they are vibrating just a tiny bit because atoms are constantly in motion, but they're not vibrating enough for them to actually break apart and change shape. They're still stuck together. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. Now, if I want to take my solid table and I keep adding energy to it, let's say I want to heat it up. I put a flame to it and heat it up. The more heat I add, the more energy I add, the more those atoms begin to shake and move. Okay? Then, you see how over here the atoms are more spread apart? And you can see the little lines around them, meaning there's some motion going on there. Okay? In a liquid, atoms are still stuck together, right? You still have a liquid puddle or what, a shape or liquid uh, substance that's still all together, but they're moving fast enough to where they're not locked together, okay? 
So if I heat up my table, eventually I can melt it down into liquid plastic. Okay? Now, liquid can then be turned into a gas if you add even more energy to it. Where have we talked about this before? You gotta think way, way back. It has to do with the water cycle. Fella? Evaporation. Very good. Evaporation. A liquid turns into a gas when you add so much energy to it that the atoms eventually move so fast that they break free from each other and escape into the air as a gas. Okay? Fella? Because they're they're not moving enough for anything to actually move. When you move the object, it just makes the atoms smaller or less. No, you're just it doesn't it doesn't cause anything to happen to them. You're just kicking the atoms and picking them up and moving them somewhere else. It's kind of like, well, does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Um, there was I have no idea how they did it, but the smallest stop motion is called the boiling. Mm -hmm. It actually made the atoms. Interesting. Cool. Um, like it went through a microscope, mm -hmm. and somehow they like moved the atoms around so it made them smaller. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Connor. The floor was made of plasma. Is that what it's the core? That's why it's made of like really really hot metal because that's plasma. Not the world. Stars. Well, I remember you just said that the earth. The globe is made of um, plasma. No, 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 no
No. I guess so. Landon? No. That's it. 100 degrees Celsius. What is this point called? When water or any substance goes from a liquid to a gas. Nathan? The boiling point. Now, that's the temperature in Celsius. What is it in Fahrenheit? Let's do the let's do this one first. First. What is the melting point in Fahrenheit? This is the temperature we all hope it gets to for it to snow. Caleb? Oh, very close. Sophie? 32 degrees Fahrenheit. That's probably what I was thinking too. Essentially. Not yet. What about the boiling point in Fahrenheit? Hannah? Oh, not 112, 212. Very close. Okay. 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, this is the what point? Going from a solid to a liquid. What's it doing? Who said that? You? Melting. Good. The melting point. Okay. This is the melting point. This is the boiling point. Say melting point. Boiling point. Boiling point. Now, I'm going to flip it up on you. What if I want to take something from a gas and turn it into a liquid? What is this point called then? It's the same temperature. This is like, the, like a line. Up here to gas, down here to liquid. But if I'm going this way, I wouldn't say, oh, yeah, it's boiling now. No, that means it's going this way. If it's going from a gas to a liquid, what is it called? Ethan? Good. The condensation point. Okay? A good example of this. Yesterday I went to the gym, and when I was done working out, I got in the car to go home. Well, the windows were very cold, so it was cold outside. But my body was hot. I was producing steam. Okay? So when I got in the car, my hot steam from my body, which is gross, my hot sweat, <laughs> was a vapor off my body. Okay? When it hits its cool windows, it, what happens to the windows? They fogged up because the vapor condensated back into a liquid in little droplet form. Does that make sense? All right. Now let's keep going. If I have a gas that I'm cooling, now it's a liquid, what if I cool it even more to where it's a solid? Then what is this point called? Bella? The freezing point. Okay? It's the same temperature, but it could be called different things based on which direction you're going, up or down. Heating it up or cooling it off. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. We will continue with this tomorrow. For now, I'm going to go ahead and give you your homework, and then I'll let you have your snack.